Hi, this is Dr. Minkoff, LifeWorks Wellness Center. Today I want to talk to you about a very interesting diagnostic procedure, which is called dark field microscopy. Now, if you look at a regular light microscope, let's say you're a kid and you have a microscope, and you put a bug underneath the microscope or you put a drop of something under the microscope, what happens is the light comes from underneath through the substance, so it has to be thin enough, sliced thin enough, that the light will go through it. And then with the lens, it gets magnified and you can see something. In Germany, in the late 1800s, some people started to experiment with directing the light in a different way. So instead of the light coming right up through the substance, they put a disc that light didn't go through in the middle of the light source when the light source was coming up. And so the light would go around the edge of the disc and you get reflections of the light across the field. And so rather than seeing the light come up directly from underneath, you would see the shadows of whatever was on the slide. Now, if you took a drop of blood and put it on a regular microscope and looked with direct light, you don't see very much because blood is very pale and it's hard to identify much. That's why in a laboratory, in a regular laboratory, when blood is drawn, they put a fixative on it so it kills the cells. It's some kind of an alcohol. And then they will put a blue stain and a red stain on it so that you can see red cells turn red and white cells turn blue and you can see the different cells. And that's a valid thing. When we're looking at dark field, we're looking at a, for a different type of, of what we see, okay? Now, I first learned dark field when I was doing infectious disease. I did a fellowship in infectious disease at University Hospital in San Diego. And the head of the department of that was like one of the most famous infectious disease guys in the world. And every day we would have rounds with him where we'd go to the laboratory and we would look at specimens. On a dark field, you can see some stuff that you can't see on a regular light microscope. And one of the things that you can see are spirochetes. Spirochetes are a particular kind of bacteria. And those spirochetes at the time, we were looking for people who might have had syphilis. But in today's world, there's also spirochetes and they cause what we call Lyme disease. So I started looking at patient's blood using the dark field microscope about 20 years ago and we would just take a drop of blood, we would look at it on the slide, and we could see all kinds of things. Like you could see spirochetes if they had Lyme disease, or you could see other bacteria, or you could see that there was inflammation, or that there was biofilms, or that there was excess crystals. And it would give you sort of a snapshot of, hey, here's what this person's blood looks like. And, um, and it can be very helpful, because then if you do a treatment on them directed at that, and the beginning is very abnormal, and then later you look at it again, you can see, holy smokes, this blood looks really different. Not only does the person say, you know, I'm feeling better, my pain is better, my headaches are better, my brain fog is better, I, I'm sleeping better, but you could actually show them on the microscope, hey, your blood really looks better. This is what normal looks like, and you're almost there. So this can be very helpful for people. I want to show you a couple examples of it so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I want to show you a couple examples of this so you can see it because sometimes it's very dramatic. So this is a first visit on a person who's really sick. They have fibromyalgia, they've been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, they have a lot of gastrointestinal distress, sometimes constipated, sometimes diarrhea, a lot of bloating, their joints ache, they have trouble sleeping, their mood is poor, and they just don't feel well. They've seen a lot of practitioners. Unfortunately, their physical exam is pretty much normal. Their complete blood count and their uh, electrolytes and minerals and liver functions and cholesterol are very close to normal. And so this person has been told by lots of different doctors that your problem is in your head, you're menopausal, you're going through hormone changes, and really there's nothing wrong with you. Yet she doesn't feel good. Unfortunately, she doesn't look that bad on the surface. 
and so she's been dismissed. So she shows up in our office and whenever I hear this story from people, I know that things have been missed because normal producing people at 45 don't all of a sudden go nuts or become psychosomatically ill. There is something wrong with them. So I decide I'm going to look at your, let's look at your blood. Let's see what it looks like. And it looks like this. Now this is a mess. A normal looks like this. These are red blood cells. They carry oxygen from your lungs to your tissues and carbon dioxide from your tissues back. They're nicely separated. They're not overlapped. The field in between is all clear. This is a nice normal one. Okay? This is her. Now this is a mess. You can see all these things are glommed up. Her circulation is going to be poor. She has all this um, extra, these like these white patches here. These are called biofilms. There are collections of inflammatory proteins. So three months later, she comes back in for a recheck on how she's doing. And she's feeling much better. And she's sleeping and her pain is reduced by 90% and her brain fog is cleared and she's a happy camper. Her gut is completely simmered down. She doesn't have bloating anymore. She's having a bowel movement every day. She doesn't have pain. Her repeat is this. This is very close to normal. So this is very helpful. I can look at her and say, you're absolutely not crazy. This isn't a psychological problem. There is something going on in your body, and if we find it out what it is successfully and treat it, you can get back to normal. And that's what happened with her. Here's another one. If you watch the earlier one on pulse magnetic field treatment, I want to show you what happens with the pulse magnetic field treatment. So this blood you can see is these blood cells are all stacked up. This is maple syrup blood. It doesn't flow well. Okay? So after six treatments of a half an hour of pulse magnetic field, I re-looked at her blood. And it went to this. We recharged the cell membranes. They now don't stick to each other. This blood is now like Gatorade. It's easy to go through a straw. This doesn't go through easy. So this person doesn't have good circulation and they're likely to have pain or brain fog. This person has much better circulation so we can get healing. So the dark field microscopy can be very helpful as an example to show people, look, here's what it looks like now, here's what it looks like later. Or sometimes if we're doing the treatment and things are going slow, I can look and say, hey, is there any indication that we're doing the wrong thing or we're not going fast enough and we can get that because it's very fast it only takes a few minutes and it gives us tremendous feedback on people and I think the most helpful thing is reassuring people that if your blood looks like this there are answers you are not crazy there is something that can be done about your situation and our goal then is to find out what is this? Is this a parasite problem? Is it a lack of zinc or selenium or essential fatty acids? Is this Lyme disease? Do you have chronic Epstein-Barr? Have you had a mold exposure? All those kinds of toxins and infections can leave a person in this kind of state on a tissue cellular level. And it's easy to look at. So I learned this back in 1978 at University Hospital because it's a normal medical procedure. This is a standard procedure. If I sent blood now to my local hospital and said, please do a dark field examination because I'm suspecting syphilis, the pathologist would say, sure, and they would do it. Now, some people have abused this and they do a weekend course and they're not physicians and then they go to health food stores and they diagnose people. And that's an abuse of medicine. 
and it shouldn't be done because people have no idea of what they're doing. But in a medical setting, where you're actually working with people and you're doing other diagnostics so that you can really do a complete medical workup, workup this can be invaluable. So that's why we do it. And uh, most patients love to see their blood and they love to see the follow-ups and it can make a big difference. Okay, hope this helps.